Hi everyone, and welcome to Mr. Carlson's lab. This is part two of the restoration of this RCA CR88 radio communications receiver. It's part one, if you're interested in seeing that, we tried the thing out to see if it would work and you know went over the entire topology to look at the schematic and things like that. If you're interested in that, that will be below the video's description under the show more tab. So just below the video is the description and just below that is a show more written in capitals. If you click on that show more, it'll expand the video description and you'll find the link in there. So you can click on that and watch part one if you want to get up to speed. So now part two is getting this thing apart. We need to get this entire radio receiver apart so that I can get in here and replace the components that need to be replaced to get this thing working properly again. Again, the whole idea and the scope of this is to make this radio receiver perform the way it did when it rolled off the factory line back in the 40s and that it will. So what we need to do today is get this entire thing out of this big heavy case and that will also reduce the weight of the radio receiver as well because the case itself is extremely heavy. Even just the bottom plate on this radio receiver is heavy. So getting it out of the case will make this thing a little bit easier to move around. You know, it's still incredibly heavy, but uh, it will make this thing a lot easier to move around on the bench and uh, will allow me to get at the components that are kind of hidden under here and in the back and tucked away. So the very first thing to do if you're following along and just know I know there's quite a few people that own AR88 receivers and CR88 receivers and I've been contacted about this. They're very very interested in this series and they have a whole bunch of questions. So the bottom line is, is if you're following along you're doing so at your own risk. You just know that you know there is B plus in this thing and this thing is extremely heavy. You got to be very careful. You can very easily pinch your fingers and things in something like this. So just know that. Be very very careful. And again you're doing so at your own risk. I'll talk more about some of the components in here and some of the things that, the, that don't make them so incredibly friendly to work on too as uh, we go through this entire series. So right now in order to get this thing out what I need to do is turn this thing back basically so it's back on its feet again here and then undo these screws here and here. Now there are guide pins in the back of this case here so there's two big metal pins that, that guide this in so when you do you know tip this thing on its side all the weight won't be on the face plate of the radio it actually holds the back of the chassis steady if those guide pins weren't there the chassis would try to sag in this case now before you actually uh, pull this out of the case you are going to want to make sure that if you have the bottom on the radio receiver still and you just want to take it out of the case take the screws out in the front on the bottom panel and take the screws out on the rear of the bottom panel because what will happen is the back side of the chassis will hang up on those screws and then what you do is you mar the threads of the screws and then they don't want to come out and that's the reason that there's this one down here that's been snapped off so what somebody has done is they've probably tried to pull this out and it's you know rammed up against the threads a bunch of times they managed to get it out they put it into a different hole and then of course when they tried to remove it again it just snapped off. It's very common with this particular radio receiver the way that it's put together. So you don't want to score those threads. You probably find if you have a radio receiver like this and you're going to remove the bottom panel some of these screws may be very difficult to get out just because they've done that already. Alright so uh, if it's easy to get off you're pretty lucky. So again take the front screws out and the rear screws out. The side ones aren't too incredibly important. Um, they're on the outside of the chassis. Uh, actually this, this, this side is in the chassis. I think these ones are on the outside of the chassis. Yeah outside of the chassis on the inside. So you might want to take these ones out as well on the top. So that way you don't, um, you don't run the chassis over the screws sticking up inside the, uh, in, inside the case here. All right. So what we're going to do then is flip this thing back up and I will, I'm going to slide this actually over, if you can see this, I'm going to slide this over to the edge right here. So I'll just do that right now. And move this like so. And get this out of the way. You can see all this. something rolling around inside there. All right and now what I want to do is take these screws out on the front which isn't too big of a deal. You can see that this is pretty uh, messed up. So it's probably been in an atmosphere that isn't too incredibly friendly. 
Do that. That should probably been in a in a rusty situation. Move this over here. Again, as I explained in part one, I put uh, little felt stick-ons underneath the underneath the uh, rubber feet here, so I can slide it around on the bench nice and easy. That makes the case easy to move around on a polished surface. And uh, if you wax your bench's surface, then it's really easy. So the thing is just goes slipping around on here like ice. So this radio receiver is about as heavy as a car. Not really, but it's heavy. So these things here, uh, I'm not really quite sure what I'm going to do with them. I may have some ones in nice condition. If not, I might actually spray them with just a different color in the end. Again, this is a, an electrical restoration, not so much a physical restoration of this. I will make this look a, a little bit better. You know, there are some things that I would like to address on the case. But um, yeah, it is a, an electrical restoration of this radio receiver. You know. We'll probably get some color matched paint. The face is going to come off of this thing as well. So, um, you know, that gives me some time to take this down to uh, a place that color matches paint and they can put their little sensor on this and uh, I can get some touch up paint. So I really don't want to repaint the whole face. The face is in very nice condition the way it is. So uh, unfortunately somebody has cracked the dial plastic so I'll have to replace this. I have one of these that is dark, uh, darker colored like in the AR88 series. I have a spare one. So I might just put that in here. So it might actually look pretty good. So a black case and then maybe these two pieces of trim being black and then a, a, a black uh, a face plate here, a dial face plate might actually look very, very nice in this radio receiver with the black knob. So it kind of contrasts each other all over the place. So we'll see how that works out. And if not, I'll just uh, look for another gray one. So, okay. So now that this is loose like this, it should pretty much just slide forward. Now let's open the lid up like so, put this in here, stick my hand in here and there it is and uh, extremely heavy it is. So what I'm going to do is close this again and I will grab this, my friendly piece of uh, uh, bench protection, I guess you could call it. All right, move this over here, try and keep this all in the frame so you can see all this. It's a big thing to be moving around and keeping this in the uh, camera frame. So I'm gonna put this, this stuff all over here. I'm gonna put this on the underside like so, so when I slide this out, it doesn't absolutely destroy my bench. So I'll grab this, slide this out, and it's getting pretty close. So, I might need to be in front of this a little bit while I'm doing this because this thing is so incredibly heavy. So let's see if I can grab this from the back side somehow. I don't want to get my hands, I do not want to get my hands under this ledge here because uh, again, this thing is just so heavy, it, it's going to settle down and uh, that is not going to be friendly for my hands. So I'll get this right to the edge and uh, it's overhanging a bit so I got to be careful. I'm just going to stand in front of this and see if I can grab this. I'll grab the filter can and the transformer and gently settle it down. Of course, the line cord is tying me up a bit. So there it is. At this point, it is out of the case. So I'll get this here. Move that onto the top and I'm just going to move this out of the way. Nice heavy case. What is that? Oh, that's an old dial light that somebody's replaced and it's been rolling around in the case. Just move that. So you can see this isn't touching the bench, which is nice. So it just settled down on there quite nicely. So I'm going to have to move this around a little bit. Dustin all that kind of stuff. I'm going to grab another protective piece of uh, foam board. I think this is called. There's a funny name for it. A lot of people have mentioned what this stuff is and uh, I'm sure it said that uh, this stuff here is in the art supply stuff, uh, foam board or foam backing or whatever they call it. I wonder if it even says what it is here. No, doesn't say what it is. Of course it doesn't. All right, so 
I'm just gonna try and lift this up. I'm gonna have to be in front of the camera to do this. I'll probably grab the transformer in this and uh, just lift and put that on the underside like so. All right, so in there I'm safe. I'm not gonna destroy my bench top. So now that I have this like this, I am going to move the camera and we'll take a closer look at what's on top here. And uh, let's remove this and see if the tools are there, as I mentioned in part one. I doubt it. All right, let's take a look under the cover and see what we have. So what do you think? Think the tools are gonna be there? Place your bets now. All right. Wow, that's tight. What a surprise. So that's normally where the tools are. So there you go. It's typical. I mean, just about all the time. Oh, look at that. They have a glass mixer in here. Okay, so uh, let's see. Pardon the camera movement. I'm going to move the camera just a little bit closer so things are going to jostle around here for a moment. Maybe I'll even tip this up like so, so you can have more of a straight down type of view. Pretty scary angles with the camera here. Very heavy camera at the top. Hopefully it doesn't tip and fall. All right, so they've put a, uh, a glass mixer tube in here, which is a no-no. So there really isn't enough shielding to, um, to work properly in a situation like this. This is designed for a metal, a metal tube. It's designed around a metal tube, so. Somebody is, uh, yeah, put this in here. So this might actually be part of the reason that the circuit was doing what it was previously. Remember how we would move the band switch around and some bands would stop? It could be because of this one tube right here. Why they've put a, a glass, uh, you know, 6SA7 in there is kind of strange. But anyways, that will need to be, uh, you know, converted back to a metal tube again. So I'll put a metal tube in here. So. We're going to test all of the tubes together anyways, so every single tube in here will need to be tested, you know, because we don't know what the, uh, how this is going to perform if we don't have, uh, have a good idea of how the tubes are performing. So everything else here, it looks like, you know, somebody's carved an M on some of the tubes, an M or a W, I don't know what that is. There's a W or an M on that, SG7. Yeah, there, and they've done it over here too. I don't know if you can see that carved one on there, one on here. I don't know, maybe W for working or I don't know. Who knows what people do over time. Look at all the adjustment points. So every single one of these is an adjustment point. So I'll grab a tool here and I'll point to it. So the alignment of this thing should be a lot of fun. I'll be here forever doing this. So there are so many alignment points in this receiver. So they're everywhere. And uh, when we take a look at the actual alignment paper, you're going to say, wow, that is a crazy alignment. And it is. So this uh, radio needs to be aligned by means of visual alignment. So it needs to be swept in order to do this. And of course, I'll be using a spectrum analyzer to do that. And so we want the best alignment we can get on this thing because, uh, you know, we're going to be comparing this to R390s and SP600s and everything. So uh, this one is going to have to be... Uh, you know, really, uh, I guess you could say trying to keep up with the pack. <laughs> so <laughs> this is, uh, <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. This radio is absolutely in no way, shape or form any slouch. This is a really, really good, really, really good receiver. So it should be very interesting to see how these all perform together. All of these are alignment points. Every single one of these that you see, all of these everywhere. There's uh, so many alignment points on this. It is not funny. Anything that you see, any pole that you see sticking up like this is all in alignment. This is an alignment point here. All of these are all alignment points. They're everywhere. They're on the back side too. They're all over the back. So this thing is just peppered with capacitors and inductors. So that's what's under that cover. So we have four tubes under there. So we have uh, two RF amplifiers and then we have the uh, mixer tube and the oscillator over here. And let's see, what else? 
and we can take a look at the actual tuning capacitor. So what I'll do is I'll remove some of the screws on the tuning caps. We're gonna have to do that anyways. So there's a whole bunch of screws on the side here. You can see I'll get down in here and remove these. So what I'll do is I'll remove all of these. There's some on the other side as well. And uh, I'll be right back. I'll save you from that. I've got all of the screws out. So I had to remove some of the tubes here and you have to use you know, a little bit once you loosen them. So what I do is I loosen them off with a little quarter inch wrench here loosen them and then what I do is I stick this into the screw and then back it out like so because they're you have to get into some pretty tight places in here to do this so what I'll do is I'll just lift that off now and there's the tuning capacitor and that's looking very clean so that looks very very nice you can see that so when I turn the dial here in the front see how it tunes each stage That is a beautiful capacitor assembly. So that'll all need to be lubed up. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of cleaning in here, but uh, that will definitely need to be lubed up and all that kind of stuff. And as I do this, uh, you know, the, the tuning will even become more smooth than it is. Now the gearing in this is very good. So in a lot of these things, they were tuned back and forth on the band so much, the gearing is actually worn out up front. You need to replace the transmission on the front here. But uh, this is in very nice condition. So um, this has been lubed up properly. So that's the top side here. And uh, I removed a couple of tubes. So this one is the uh, 6J5. This is the oscillator. You'll notice that the oscillator is right at the very front of the chassis, right? To, kind, to try to keep this as far away from the RF as possible. So they're moving this as far up to the front as possible. So it goes oscillator mixer and then uh, you know first and second rf right here so and everything on the bottom will be in a box it'll all be isolated from each other to keep everything just as quiet as possible so uh yeah very uh, intelligent design the engineers that put this thing together knew exactly what they were doing and what they were looking for back you know way back when in the 40s they uh this radio receiver really is, uh, it is a work of art. This thing is just an absolute work of art. Everything is just tunable, every, you know, so that you can get this thing just spot on. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip this thing back up and uh, we'll take the bottom shields off of the boxes and we'll see what's under there and see if anybody's tampered with any of that stuff. See if we have any, uh, any uh, missing parts or, you know, just whatever has been done. We know that this has been in and it has been tampered with over time, so... Hopefully everything is original in those boxes. We'll find out here quite shortly. Let's take a look under these shields right here and see what we find. So what I'll do is I'll remove all of these screws like so. There's a lot of them. And we'll take a look. All right, all the screws are removed. And this is what we have. So this box here is separated from all the rest of them. You can see that this box here is dedicated to the oscillator only. There's one tube socket at the top and they want to keep, again, this as far away from the antenna as possible. They want to keep this section as stable as possible. And that's one of the reasons that they do use ceramic band switches, right? Expansion and contraction is a real big problem that causes frequency drift. That's the reason they use mica capacitors. In modern day equipment, they would use an NP0, C0G, type capacitor. Back in the day they used mica and uh, it's very very stable. So all of these receivers would require a warm-up period of some sort. So maybe a half an hour, 45 minutes and then everything gets to temperature and it's nice and stable. You'll notice in some of the earlier radio receivers, different types of communications receivers, that they will use um, different types of material in the actual band switch. So some of their early hammerlins, they didn't use ceramic and then they found that later on that, uh, oh, by using ceramic, you know, we're going to lessen expansion and contraction issues and uh, we'll you know, get better frequency stability. This is very important when you're listening to CW and, you know, you're really, uh, you have your filtering up nice and tight, you know, if you're using a crystal filter and or crystal, you know, the crystal phasing control, yeah, you, you know, any type of movement in the signal will change the tone of the CW that's being received. And in a case where you're listening to a sideband, it'll change the pitch of the voice. So you wanna keep everything just as stable as possible. That's the reason that they've built this the way that they have. Everything was thought of when they put this thing together. So it doesn't look like anything's been changed in here. It looks to be all original. Let's see if I will get a little bit more light on the uh, subject here. And in fact, of course it's 
unplug. Here we go. I get a little bit more light in there. And I'll zoom on in just a little bit. Take a look at what's going on inside the box here. It all looks original. Doesn't look like anything's been changed or tampered with inside this box whatsoever, which is a really good thing. And the band switch is uh, actually, I would say, spotless. Doesn't even look like there's hardly any kind of corrosion or anything on the band switch. So in the uh, in the box there. So uh, that's that's a really good sign. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to start removing all of these screws. So I'll be back in about a week or something like that, I guess. Yeah, right. It's going to take a while to get these things out. So what I'll do is I'll uh, remove every single one of these one by one, and uh, I'll be back. I'll save you from that pain. All right, quite some time later, I've got all the screws and the lock washers, aside from this one, taken off. That one was different than the rest of them, so. That is looking pretty original as well. So the inside here is looking nice and clean. The band switch is looking pretty decent as well. And I'll move this around to show you here in just a moment. So turn that back on. Yeah, the band switches are looking pretty good and they've got, uh, which looks to be some, uh, some form of uh, compound on them. That's probably what's keeping them nice and clean. So they're still gonna get cleaned again. Everything in here is looking very original. I'll just zoom on in so you can see what's going on. Maybe you can see portions of the band switch. I'll move this around. I gotta be really careful because this thing is so heavy it's trying to even poke through the uh, see portions of the band switch in there. Let's move the uh, focus over to here maybe and get some light on the situation. You can see they're, you know, it's very, very clean. The actual band switch itself is very clean. A lot of the times these things are, you know, they tarnish, they go completely black and uh, it's looking really good. It doesn't look like there's any replacement components inside these uh, boxes. They look like, you know, they've got the early roundies, so these all have to be tested. And, um, but everything else is looking all original, which is a really good sign. You know, this, um, this thing doesn't look like it's even been tampered with in here at all. So it looks like the band switch could just use some contact cleaner and some rotation and just to make sure everything's good. And then I'll, I'll put a little bit more lubricant on that so they don't tarnish up and you know relubricate everything in here and i think this entire box is uh, going to be probably okay again all the resistor values are going to have to get checked right so we need to check everything just to make sure everything is okay but it is really looking quite nice so yeah no problems in there so that is with the uh the two Shields removed on the bottom here, lots of points. Now, the reason that they have so many points are, is for RF shielding, and not only that, is to keep everything nice and tight and steady. So you don't want any type of movement at all. So they're counteracting uh, movement due to the chassis heating up and cooling down and things like that, right? The, the more solid you can make everything, you know, the more you can hold it in place, the more stable the receiver actually is. And they wanted this thing to be as, you know, of course, as stable as possible. So that is looking very, very nice. So the main filter capacitor has a shield over here as well. Let's move this over as a shield, shielding the bottom components here. So I'll end up removing that as well. Hopefully I can do this without uh, too much grief. I might have to get something under there to hold this. Of course, I've checked the capacitor to make sure it's discharged. That's a very important thing to do. This here. I may actually have to remove the antenna wires in order to get this out. So I feel like this. When I come out, boy, is that ever tight on the back side here. Let's see if I can slide this out. It's coming. I can 
just get you just a little bit further. And that one out of there. There it is. And the capacitor's looking pretty good too. Pardon the movement of the camera here again. Move you over and zoom you in so you can inspect the actual capacitor down in there itself. And look at some light on the subject. So it's looking pretty good. It doesn't look like there's any leakage. It just looks like there's, you know, dust and such on here. So it doesn't look like there's any leakage from the capacitor at all, which is a very good sign. So, of course, this entire capacitor has to be bypassed, so this will be completely disconnected and the new capacitors will be put in place. The very first thing I'm going to do in the electrical restoration of this receiver is get rid of these capacitors. Now, many of you might be asking, are you going to rebuild them, open them up? Now, I was thinking about that, but, you know, the oil inside of these capacitors really isn't all that friendly to deal with. And by even heating the lugs up, you have a chance of making these things leak around the seals. And you definitely don't want to be, you know, if you heat it up, obviously it's going to be heating that oil up. You don't want to be creating any type of a vapor or any type of a smoke or anything like that. So I want to just remove these. And what I'm going to do is just replace these with capacitors to the chassis. And that will be the easiest solution. And it'll be very, very clean as well. And then I don't have to worry about opening these things up. Down the road, I'll save these capacitors. And then down the road, I'll open them up, you know, for curiosity's sake. And I'll show you what's inside them and uh, all that kind of stuff. So again, uh, if you're following along, know that these capacitors do have oil in them. That isn't very friendly. The same with this capacitor up here and all this stuff. So you got to be very, very careful around that. Uh, if you're going to be working with these things, you know, you want to be doing that in a well-ventilated area. I myself am working with this in the lab here, and I don't want to be putting any type of heat for any length of time on these terminals, just because if it does start to leak, I don't want that, you know, the vapor or any type of a smoke to be in the lab here. So these are all going to come out, and I'll just replace these with modern capacitors that uh, definitely don't have any liquid substance inside them. And then that way these things are completely out. Now, maybe some of you want to leave these things in for just aesthetic reasons. Leave them in just because, you know, they're part of the original build of the radio. I wouldn't even suggest that because over time these things do start leaking. I've worked on AR88s where you've taken the bottom inspection panel off and it is just an oil slick inside. So uh, getting all of these things that can leak oil out of here is uh, just a very, very good idea. You know, that way you don't have to worry about that stuff pooling in your, the bottom of your radio receiver over time. And then you really don't even know it's just pooling and, you know, sitting there, right? So this, this will go, this will go, this, 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 and this will go. And I'm going to work on this capacitor here as well. So this one here will, this one will be left in for aesthetic reasons. So what I'm going to do is just uh, clip the wires off the bottom of this capacitor right here so that I'm not heating the terminals and I will put a terminal tie strip on the bottom here and solder in new capacitors and in the next episode you'll see this entire process start happening and uh, we'll get through the recapping and we'll test some tubes try the thing out again see how much of a difference that's made address any issues that still may be going on within the receiver get the receiver working perfectly and then we'll go through the alignment and try it out so it's getting close. Even right now, it isn't that far. There's not a whole lot to do in this particular radio receiver to make this thing function. So uh, I'll just start removing things now and get on that. So if you're following along and you have one of these things, that's my next step. I'm going to be getting rid of all of these capacitors and uh, I'll be isolating this one here. And in the next episode, you'll see my capacitor replacement choice and everything that uh, I'm doing to you know, bring this thing back to the way it functioned way back when. And after it's tuned, you know, I'm going to be using a spectrum analyzer to tune this thing. And uh, once everything's all cleaned up, you know, with brand new components, this thing uh, will definitely be performing the way it did, or maybe even a little bit better than uh, it did when it rolled off the factory line. Thanks for stopping by the lab today. As you can see, we're coming along. And as soon as this camera goes off, this one will go back on again. And I'll be replacing the capacitors in there. So in the next episode, you'll see that replacement process and we'll even try the thing out with just the capacitors changed and see what a difference that makes. I'm very interested in changing that mixer tube as well. It shouldn't be a glass tube. Pin number one of metal tubes 
is the outer case, it's the shield. And you'll notice that pin number one on the sockets in here is grounded to the chassis because it's designed around a metal shielded tube. So that has to go, that might even fix the problems with the bands when they went silent, just getting rid of that tube, you know, that one just alone. So again, we're gonna test all the tubes and do all that stuff together anyways, but it's kind of nice to go piece by piece and just bring this thing back to life. And then in the very end, I'll pull the entire face of the unit off. I don't wanna do that right now, just because it kind of makes it not structurally sound. You know, I'm moving the chassis around to change caps and do all sorts of things. So I'm continually juggling this, you know, really heavy radio receiver around. So I wanna get all of this stuff done. And then right in the end, I'll pull the, the face of the unit off and replace that. Uh, that piece of dial plastic and you know lubricate the gears and do all that stuff. I'll take you through the entire process. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed and this is what's coming up. This is part two right here and we're on to part three next. If you haven't checked out my Patreon page, I have an ongoing electronics course there with at this point over 150 videos teaching you all about electronics, modern and antique, right up to building your own circuit boards and building many of my own inventions. So I release my inventions and designs up there as well. So if you're interested in taking part in that electronics course, definitely check it out. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab, just like the link for the previous part here of this, uh, of this video series. And I'll also pin that link at the top of the comment section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right to my Patreon page and you can check it out. So that's where we're at in this episode. I'll see you all very soon. Take care. Bye for now.